Oh good, you're already here. It's a Friday afternoon and we're at the beer club in Bengaluru. Over the past decade, the craft beer scene has taken off in the city and now these microbreweries, bars and pubs have become go-to places for people who love to eat and drink in the city. We're going to be taking a trip across Bengaluru to go behind the scenes and meet some of the people who make your favourite craft beers. But before we go, I'm going to order a beer over here. Excuse me, can I get a... Belgian wit IPA. I like Belgian ale. I like Hefeweizen. No, I just drink old man. I actually have no doubt that Bangalore is the craft beer capital of India, uh, primarily because a lot of the, the early breweries, early craft breweries started here, um, and they've only grown, I think, what, 68 or 69 now in Bangalore. Uh, and truthfully, I think it's really, really good that there are so many, because each one of us are doing our little part to educate people about what craft beer is all about. That's Narayan Manipali, co-founder and CEO of Geist. And he's not the only one who hails Bengaluru as India's pub capital. But let's take a step back. How did this all start? And the very first one was the beer club, uh, started by um, Arvind and Minakshi Raju. And um, they had in fact uh, been sort of pioneers in the sense of get, uh, they had to uh, get all the licensing done and you know all of that was new. You know people got to know what craft uh, craft beers could be all about. What Beer Club did, at least in South India, was to elevate the status of beer. Uh, we introduced a lot of new styles, whether it was a stout or an IPA, American pale ales, the wheat beer, for example, a lot of fruit beers. Uh, essentially, what we tried to do was expand the people's palates. That was over 10 years ago, and it began an explosion of craft beer purveyors across the city. And in the heart of Indranagar is one of Bengaluru's most well-known microbreweries. So we started as a bar and restaurant to start with. Uh, we did that for 10 months before we got a license to brew. Uh, in December 2011, we started making beer. Uh, we, we, we were going to start with six or seven beers. Um, and we wanted to have some variety in there that could satisfy everyone. But what we did was we went in with two wheat beers. Ten years later, we still have two wheat beers on tap. Um, and at that point, it, you still didn't have this knowledge that Indians love wheat beers. Uh, but it was a punt because wheat beers are fruity, a little sweet, uh, a little tart. And it's um, it kind of, uh, you know, uh, made sense instinctively that, uh, you know, it, it, it will suit the Indian palate. Anyone who's walked into a craft brewery knows that there are many, many different kinds of beers. So how do brewers decide which ones, like Sibi says, are going to work for Indian drinkers? We just took whatever styles that we were comfortable drinking, made them here, and realized that, you know what, people, they liked it. You know, Blonde is, is you know, it's, it's got estuary notes that we are familiar with. Um, a Hefeweizen, for example, has banana and clove that's kind of familiar to us. A Belgian wit beer, for example, has orange peel and coriander, again, familiar taste to us. So Geist is South India's first distribution craft brewery. And this is the first brewery that's making craft beer in small volumes and a large variety on a brewery license. So Geist initially started in 2006 and then was brewing beer in two different microbreweries here. And then we started this project in 2016. So this is a brewery that's got an industrial brewery license, but it makes small volume craft beer and sends out kegs uh, to restaurants across, like pre-pandemic, to restaurants across the city. We also have our crawlers that we supply to um, various retail shops across Bangalore. Bangalore's craft beer movement is growing quickly, but a lot of brewers took inspiration from the beer innovation happening in the United States, where microbreweries took off in the 1990s. And when I was in Portland, all my batchmates, my teammates, uh, group mates, everybody were brewing beer. And you can't help but get sucked into that whole energy. And so I built this little brewery in my garage and um, experimented with, with different kinds of beers. I had come down here to, to Bangalore and on MG Road there was a restaurant and this, this waiter who was serving us, I asked him, what beers do you have? 
And he said, so we have three beers. I'm like, oh, I'm all excited. I said, which beers do you have? He said, Kingfisher, Kingfisher, and Kingfisher. So I said, okay, we must come back here and do something different. So that's how it got started. It's true that you can't really talk about Bengaluru and beer culture without mentioning Kingfisher. Here's beer consultant Akash Hirabet, who is working towards taking Indian-made craft beer to the world with more on that history. If you ask me how Bangalore came to be such a beer-loving city, I would probably put it down to uh, the man behind Kingfisher, Vijay Malia. One was that um, he, of course, introduced draft beer or beer on tap to the city in the late 80s, maybe early 90s. And secondly, he actually worked with the government and convinced them to allow bars to directly buy the beer from the brewery rather than it being routed through the government distribution centers. Also, if you look at Bangalore, it's um, historically the pub city, right? And we've had all these old, uh, wonderful old haunts. People of my uh, vintage uh, have enjoyed them. There was this time when we had NASA and all of these places. If you're old enough, you remember those. Mm, and I think they had huge loyalty. And South Bangalore had never seen anything of this. It's, you know, uh, stereotypically uh, uh, been known as a very conservative place. And there were very trendy, cool microbreweries opened there and found a market. You know, found enthusiastic um, customers and guests who came. There's another thing about Bengaluru that's helped boost the craft beer movement, an iconic part of the city that we've all experienced. That's right, traffic. Craft beer and microbreweries are sort of becoming a neighborhood thing. Um, partly, of course, in due to the uh, well, legendary Bangalore traffic, which caused me made, made commutes so difficult and time consuming that uh, people wanted to go somewhere within 15, 20 minutes of where they stay. So um, the traditional uh, CBD area is, uh, of course, God has many craft breweries, but uh, they sort of burgeoned outwards from there into other areas and residential areas. Koramangla, Sarjapur, South Bangalore, JP Nagar specifically has several now. You're probably thinking of your favorite pub right now. The beer you usually order on a Thursday evening after work, or maybe a new seasonal style you want to try. But how adventurous are beer drinkers here anyway? People are now getting a little more curious. They are coming and asking us to brew specific styles that we haven't brewed in the past. Uh, they are getting a lot more knowledgeable. There are still that, that there's still a major section of people who wants to come and just drink a beer, have a good time. But the number of people who are enjoying their beer, uh, tasting it like a proper wine or a whiskey, that's increased, which is very good to see. So I think with the hyper-connectedness of the youth, um, with the fact that they have traveled all over the world, uh, and, and having experienced tastes from various parts of the world want that same thing happening here. So I think craft, the future of craft is very, very bright. Across the world, the food and beverage industry were hit hard by the pandemic and craft brewers were no exception. Lockdowns and the fear of COVID-19 created extra challenges for the restaurant business. We asked brewers how they were impacted by the pandemic. It's been like the worst of times for the F&B industry, not just for bars and microbreweries, but for restaurants as well. Even in normal times, it's one of the most difficult uh, businesses and realms to be in. Uh, profitability is low, the challenges are high, rents are killing, attrition is high, a lot of problems, right? It's this constant anxiety of when the next lockdown is going to be, when the next uh, weekend curfew, or you know, what change in timings, uh, because it's hard to plan, it's hard to um, plan, plan your brewing is one, but planning the rest of your operations. And it's still far from over. Many restaurants in the city have been casualties of the pandemic and estimates suggest that number will continue to grow. But even still, many businesses are finding ways to successfully sustain themselves. What help does was the government of Karnataka really uh, listened to our concerns and allowed us to sell growlers. Uh, people were happy because they were able to take away craft beer. That was a big boost for us. People need places to go and, and especially in a city like Bangalore where the work situation is stressful, people need a place to go, listen to music, catch up with your friends. What, are, what did people miss in the lockdown? I, for instance, I, was, I moved to a small town and missed being just being able to go catch up with a friend in a bar. 
Even during the pandemic, new breweries found a way to open shop in the city, including Geist, which opened their beer garden for dine-in in October last year. It almost seems like nothing can come between the city and its love of beer. So for us, the, the whole goal is if you close your eyes and you drink one of our beers from a particular region in the world, you should not be able to tell the difference between what you experience abroad and what you experience here. So our effort, along with others, is to make sure that we put Karnataka and Bangalore on the global map. The thing that microbreweries have brought upon or the, the knowledge that, they've, uh, that the beer industry has gained is, is there are beers other than your commercial lagers that people like to drink. Microbreweries and Bangalore was a match like made in heaven. It, it, it was just something that had to happen.